Heaven Asker Music, a guide for beginners. While specialized mastering engineers often produce the best results, anyone can produce a decent master if they know the basic concepts and goals of mastering. We'll go through the foundational steps and tools involved in mastering a track for release, removing the mystery from the process and its associated technical terms. What is audio mastering? Mastering is the final post-production step in a track or album's life cycle, and the step after mixing a track in the music production process. It can be described as the stage where the final touches to tonal and volume levels, sonic inconsistencies, and overall musicality are applied. Out of all the stages of music production, mastering is the most subtle. Through the use of specialized tools, such as EQS, stereo enhancers, and compressors, mastering engineers attempt to draw out the qualities of a mix while rounding out any jarring features. The main, in-your-face, element of the mastering process is its adjustment to the overall loudness of a track. The loudness level of a mix is pushed up until it reaches a level that is competitive with the industry standard tracks you hear on streaming platforms. The first step of mastering. Mastering begins when you bounce the entirety of your mix into one audio file and placed it into a new session in your DAW of choice. Mastering is simplified if you've made a high-quality mix on. Errors that can be fixed in your mix should be fixed there not in your master. Your life will be made easier if you've left some headroom in your mixed on session, when your stereo output channel doesn't read above minus 4 to minus 6 dB. Not only does this avoid clipping issues, but it allows you to apply additive EQ edits into the changes that may bring up the overall level. Before you rush into placing a bunch of plugins, listen through the entirety of your track. If you have reference tracks to compare it to, listen to them too. This will help you make informed decisions on what mastering plugins to use and how. Ensure a clean beginning and end of your track. After your first playthroughs, a good initial task is to make a clear start and end to your track. While the beginning and end of your audio file may already be relatively obvious, mastering requires exact precision. To do so, create a track from your master channel strip and enable automation. Then, automate the volume at the beginning and end of your track. Try and follow that tempo and style of your track so you don't cause any off-putting sonic interruptions. This will help you avoid any excessive hissing and other sounds that can appear once you raise the loudness at the end of your mastering process. Beginnings and endings are memorable, so try to get these areas just right. Improve your track with additive and subtractive EQ. Now, it's time to get into the body of the track and see if you can improve it via subtle EQ boosts or cuts. It helps to examine the visual analyzer most EQS show as it can reveal too literal or too much in certain frequency ranges. Similarly, you may see that your reference track has more presence in the sub-bass and bass frequencies. Thus, you can try some EQ boosts there. Different EQ plugins specialize in boosting slash cutting different frequency ranges when mastering. For example, you may find that Pug EQs work best for boosting low frequencies, and other EQ tools are best for high frequencies. The key is experimentation. Use multiband compressors. Multiband compressors allow you to apply different rates of compression to different frequency banks. Generally, multiband compressors are a good idea if you're hearing too much in a specific frequency range, for instance the low or high end. Be careful when applying compression as too much can suck the life out of a dynamic musical mix. Apply a stereo enhancer. Stereo enhancer plugins are a great way to add some polish to a track which, particularly, headphone listeners will appreciate. They work by increasing the difference between the left and right channels, which, in turn, enhances the stereo effect. Try out a stock stereo image or plug to whiten your mix. Extreme usage will mess up the whole master, so go for several applications to find the sweet spot. Utilize limiting and metering. Limiters and metering plugins are what allow you to precisely meet the loudness level of the modern music industry. Let's look at how they work and what this level is. Metering plugins. Metering tools give you exact ratings for things like lifts, RMS, peak, and tour peak. Tour peak and peak represent the maximum level at a specific point in time. Tour peak is more accurate. Lifts represents the average, also called integrated, loudness over time based on the human perception of loudness. RMS represents the same but based on the average power signal. The industry standard for measuring levels is lifts. Nowadays, streaming platforms like Spotify set minus 14 lifts as the maximum level. You can still make a master that reaches minus 11 lifts, but Spotify will automatically reduce it to minus 14 lifts. Thus, all their music is standardized level-wise. Choose a whole integer target between minus 10 to minus 14 lifts for your master, and use your limiter to achieve it. Remember to reset your metering plug in each time you restart your track. Limiters. 
Limiters are, essentially, extreme compressors. They are also called brick wall compressors as they completely stop the level from exceeding a specified volume, for instance 0 dB, thereby avoiding clipping. Paired with this function is their ability to raise the gain of your track. Use your limiter in tandem with your metering plug-in until a playthrough of your track produces your desired lifts, for instance minus 10 lifts. Drive your limiter too hard, and you can ruin the musicality of your track. Find the sweet spot where sonic quality is maintained while the overall level reaches your desired lifts. Listen to the end result on multiple devices. The final step in mastering is to listen to your result on multiple electronic devices, for instance your speakers, your computer, and your phone. A good master produces a trap that sounds great on any and all sound systems. Create a release ready track. Once you've made sure you've done all you can in your mix, balance it, and load up a new session for mastering. Design a precise start and end, and apply subtle additive and subtractive EQ edits. Use multiband compression if needed, and stereo enhancement tools for a touch of additional width. Then, use your limiter and metering plugins to reach competitive low ups levels without sacrificing sonic quality. Add in some final checks on different sound systems, and your track is now ready for distribution.